everybody, Scout Crafter here again. Beautiful day here in the city. It's about uh, low 60s. Nice breeze. Great day to go fly a kite, which I love to do. Uh, anyway, uh, we have a really uh, a, a quick one, but uh, a nice set of wrenches up from Canada from our buddy Abe, and uh, let's go check okay, them out. Okay, today's project, real quick one, my buddy Abe up in Canada who enjoys the channel and he wanted to uh, send down, he said, I got a few tools I want to send down. It's nothing big, but he says, I just want, you know, American made tools. He sent them down and I was pretty amazed at, uh, at what they were. Now, a lot of these, you know, common wrenches, they're, uh, these are called open end uh, wrenches. And uh, if they have one open end and one uh, box end, that's called a combination wrench, but these are uh, double open end wrenches. Um, and these were really common back in the, you know, the twenties and thirties, things like that. This, everybody used them. They kind of fell uh, away in, in popularity. But, um, as I was looking through these, I found, so look at this here. This is pretty interesting. We'll clean these up real quick, but these are a Toyota pliers. And, uh, these are really, uh, very lightweight, but yet they're well-made, very nice pliers, Toyota from Japan. And uh, you don't usually see too many of these around. Uh, another interesting wrench is, you see this one here has a uh, a scale on it as far as uh, um, distance, you know, three inches, six inches. And that's pretty interesting. It has the inch scale on there. But this one here, when I saw this, I said, wow, look at this. This is an old craftsman. And, uh, you know, you look at the shape that it's in now. But let's get started on these, clean them up, see what we got. Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation of the three that we picked to uh, look at. Um, all the rust is off now. We'll decide what we want to do. You can see here what the head looks like here. Um, I would like to polish out that head. You know, it's always rough here because you got that forge lines here. So we're going to see what we can do here. But I, my uh, my goal would be I'd like to polish out the two heads paint it and, and accent these uh, markings for this wrench and uh, these I would just like to they're all cleaned up and stuff and these are really nice again these Toyotas I, I, I you've never seen these before lightweight very nice they're not sloppy at all nice pair of pliers um, and then obviously the uh, craftsman and what we'll do with this here hopefully we'll uh, we'll get this back to looking polished on the edges and uh, maybe put a little accent paint in here, but that's that's what I have planned for that. So let's get to it. Okay, we're almost quickly through this, but I ran into a dilemma. My intentions were to paint this. I was going to paint this like a nice black and accent the letters, but you know as well as I do, the minute you paint anything. The minute this thing goes into a toolbox or something, that black paint is going to chip. I wish there was a way I could uh, dye it or something that, you know, wouldn't chip off. Or, you know, even if I was to uh, uh, how it powder, powder coated, you know, that's a little bit more durable. But that chips too. So that's where my dilemma is now. I have to figure this out. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what these wrenches look like before we started. And we are calling this project finished. These came out real nice, didn't they? Um, here we have the, uh, Toyota pliers. I think that's a model 55 there. It says 55. We just, uh, filled it in with some red paint. It looks real nice. And, uh, these pliers are just, uh, just so beautiful. They're so lightweight. They work so well and there's no slop in them. Real nice pair of pliers. Very happy with these. Uh, secondly, we did this, uh, this unknown maker wrench. And remember it had the markings or graduations and they do line up. You could see here. They are exact to the uh, measurements, so that's an interesting wrench. And I couldn't put any paint on there because I, I didn't, you know, for the future reference, I thought maybe that it would, um, you know, that it would chip off, and I don't like any chip paint or anything on there. But uh, polished out the edges, got rid, rid of the forging marks on the uh, on the sides, and and this is a really nice wrench. Feels really nice in the hand. And then, um, of course, our favorite. Uh, the Craftsman, and look at, this is just a pretty wrench, isn't it? Look at the, uh, the, the shape, the size, the, uh, 
uh, the design of this wrench, you know, with the Craftsman in the middle. Uh, I, I painted that red and baked it on for about three days. Uh, took the uh, top of the lettering off, and it's just a nice wrench. 1720, let's see, 1729, I guess is the uh, the model number of the uh, the wrench set, maybe that it came from. And uh, I tried to date it. It's very difficult to date some of these, but. Uh, you know, to think that this started off here, went to Canada, came back. So it's a full circle wrench. Anyway, this is just a quick one. Abe, thanks so much. I uh, really appreciate it. This is, uh, you know, these are really nice wrenches here. And I'll put them back into the collection. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you have a nice day. And uh, talk to you soon.